Welcome back to the WCS America Challenger League Qualifier. We're here in a Losers Round 3 series between Sage and Trimaster. We saw Sage take down Trimaster off the back of a great opening attack with two Stalkers, Azela, and a Mothership Core. He's up 1-0. to zero. Can Trimaster level the score here? Game number two is going to be Belshir Vestige. And I'm really interested in this game. I mean, once again, Sage with that incredible harassment was just able to keep that advantage. And that's one of the great qualities of a great player is being able to keep that advantage, not losing that advantage. Uh, as we've seen a couple of times actually today where players were put into a great position and then were not able to solidify that victory. Sage, however, played it perfectly and was able to win that game. Now, TriMaster in game number two, what can he possibly do? It's going to be a tough match for him to come back. This is a, a very good map for Viking play against Colossi, though. Uh, so maybe that's really what's going to be looking to try to find good angles to pick away at his opponent's force. All right, guys. So spawning up here in the top left-hand corner from Team Root, our red Protoss player, it is Sage. And spawning down here in the bottom right-hand corner, our blue Terran player, it is Cole Trimaster. So, once again, another great um, great set of matches so far. I mean, if we could possibly even go straight on into game number three yet again. I mean, all of the games today have, uh, I think, there's only been two 2-0s? Two one 2-0? Yes. Uh, Tasia versus Hendralisk and Pig versus In Control. Right. Quite right. Oh, gas first by Trimaster saying, you know what, let's mix it up a bit. And uh, that gas first is going to allow him to either grab a very, very quick factory or go into some sort of many, many Reaper harass. So we're going to have to keep track of when he throws, or well, if he's going to throw down a second uh, Rax or not. It'd be very, very aggressive. Uh, almost a cheesy kind of start. Or is he going to go st straight on into factory? It looks like he's just going to go straight on into factory. Yeah, typical response from gas first is going to that factory build, unless, of course, you're Apocalypse or one of those guys who does some some funky builds of their own. He's going to be using an SCV to scout as well. So he's going to send that guy out to try to figure out exactly what Sage is up to. In fact, two SCVs going out. So we could see... Always buddy up. Yeah, we could see some proxy shenanigans here. And that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I, no one sends two scouting SCVs. Um, that just doesn't make any sense in a two-player map. Uh, it's either the, the, the feared two SCV harass, or he is going to go and proxy that factory. So there is an Orbital Command Center now coming out, and yep, there's the Factory coming out here at the uh, fourth base oh. position. Is he going to lift that into main? Or, no, he just might build a Starport right next I to it. I think he's just going to go straight yeah. on to Starport right next to it. It could be. So this is one of those scary moments. This is one of those scary moments where you hope that everything that you're doing right now does not get scouted. Um, some opponents are incredibly paranoid and will be able to just have a feeling and take a look over at that part of the base. I mean, the Mothership core is a flying unit, might just kind of scoot over there. But it looks like actually going straight on into the same type of aggression from before as the Stalker, the Zealot, and the Mothership core are already heading out across the map. Is he going to be ready for it this time? That's the question. He, he is. does have a bunker on the <laughs> way. All right. Not taking any chances this game, knowing that's really what cost him last game was just that one uh, mistake with the opening there. Factory's going to go flying into the main. Uh, so I imagine he's going to be producing Widow Mines out of this factory and just try to get his opponent's base saturated with the mines before there's any detection available. <laughs> I've never seen this before, but I'm absolutely in love with it. And uh, I think it actually might work perfectly. Yeah, there's just nothing here. He's going straight for that Nexus. He's got the probe already waiting there. It's whether or not he can hold off this aggression, and I don't think that's going to be an issue uh, at all. No, I mean, uh, he can just pull three there. Marines from the bunker, leave one or two in there, take down that, that Mothership core. If the Zealot Stalker tried to run past the bunker, then you just pull SCVs and you trap him. Uh, I don't think of any problems at all. There we go, just pushing the Mothership core right off. The first Widow Mine is finished. Is he going to send it in or is he going to wait for two? I think he's going to wait for two. I think he wants to completely destroy that entire mineral line. Oh, this is going to be... How do you like fireworks? Do you a like probe. Katie... Oh. oh, he's going to go in now. As soon as the probe sees it, why not? The the, the plot is up there. And I keep seeing... Uh, the probes players... are clubbed! Oh, oh, one of them bravely Ooh. sacrifices itself. I like that. I like that. I thought at first he was going to try and take it out before he was able to bury, uh, burrow. 
So many players have made that mistake and it actually just doesn't work. And ooh, forces another Widowmine to burrow too early. The Stalker's coming in again. Are they going to be able to kill it? No, but that one's kind of stuck. It is. Uh, he's got to be careful about it. Uh, segmenting one probe away to try to take the hit from the other Widowmine as well. Uh, so, you know, so far, though, with the Widowmine opening, he hasn't... Oh, no! He lifted it up at the wrong time! Oh, he, he lifted, lifted up, up the other up. one. What is, is it going to go down? No, barely does get... Takes out one Stalker. Yeah. Not bad. Man, I love the physics in this game now. <laughs> he's he's still gonna lose these units, and it, I mean, yeah. Oh, that's such a shame. But behind this, he does have a starport coming out, and he's got a lot of marines uh, pouring out as well. That really didn't cost that much for Sage to really defend that. There is an observer starting to come out. A very efficient defense. Of course, you know, uh, Trimaster's expansion is not too late here, and he hasn't lost 15 units to two stalkers militia core, so he's far ahead of where he was in last game. It's only up from here. That's right. <laughs> it's only up from here. Sage uh, adding two more gateways. So Sage a little bit paranoid, not uh, like progression up to tech, double forge or anything like that. Getting some additional units, recognizing his opponent has uh, a little bit of a faster tech than normal, so his medevacs are available. And Photon Overcharge, of course, can easily defend against any frontal assault, but medevac drops in, in two frontal attacks. You really want to bulk up that gateway force as well. And uh, it's a very, very smart call here. I mean, he just has zero scouting of what uh, what Trimasters has uh, Trimaster has been up to. He's got to make sure that Trimaster is, you know, he's going to be ready for any type of one base attack. And it doesn't cost him that much in case Trimaster just tries to go and get a natural and possibly even a third base. This is really, you know, not a huge investment that's going to completely delay him in any way. Oh, here comes the Hellion drop into the main, but there's so many Stalkers more than ready for it. One Hellion, uh, actually, both an overcharge was used. Sage was really not willing to take any chances with that. Giving the blast pop a couple of games against Tilia, I would not blame him for being so scared of Hellions, but oh, these Stalkers are coming up here. Are they going to be able to take out that medevac? It gets away with a very small amount of health. Actually going to double back right now and hide out here next to the water fountain, I think. Possibly a water fountain. Who knows? <laughs> uh, the Stalker is going to continue on, though. They're going to keep walking their way straight on into the uh, Trimaster's base. Oh, the medevac so low. The Stalker is taking out here the natural. Oh, not quite keeping his focus fire on that medevac. Trimaster gets the units out, but uh, I don't think it's going to kill too much now that Mothership Core and actually the probes are going to get a piece of action, too, and they, they actually line up. And lose the Interestingly field. enough, the Mothership Core, there we go. Uh, I was curious about that Mothership Core oh, did have 100 the, energy. The counterattack, the bunker goes down. So many stalkers. Trimaster has very few units here. He's in trouble. He's yet again losing his natural to stalkers. This is just this is not a good track record you've got going on here, Trimaster. Oh, if he loses that eBay, that's such an important upgrade. He has to get down there and save it. He can't. That's but he, it. He's not going to. He's just going to let it burn. He has enough marauders in. Uh, I mean, he had, yeah. He had he's plenty just of units. Let that burn. Unfortunate. And he's got the observer here as well, so Sage can actually just start poking up uh, on the upside of this ledge here. I mean, but Sage has no sentry, so what's to stop Trimaster from walking down the ramp and killing all the units? That's quite true. Um, at least Sage could possibly focus down those medevacs and stop any type of immediate re uh, reciprocal aggression. The Marauders coming in here doing a lot of damage to these Stalkers. Stalkers just take a step for a second and it looks like Trimaster's force is going to be able to come in here. This, that was just the weirdest situation. Oh man, that was... Trimaster, like, like Sage moves in there and Trimaster gives up his expansion because Sage is so confident with his army. And then Trimaster is like, wait a minute, you just have some Stalkers? <laughs> okay. Stalkers, that's it? Yeah. You insult my intelligence with this? It's Sage like Sage says after game number one? Yes. <laughs> Sage just felt if you if you act confidently enough with your army, your opponent will be afraid, right? Didn't quite work out though, and he, that actually was a very... Losing all those Stalkers, that's a lot of expensive units, and he might be struggling to defend his third base now uh, with a greatly diminished unit count. Yeah, and here comes that that push now onto the third base. He's taking a couple seconds. That's going to allow uh, Sage to get a couple more forces ready. There's already an immortal. Uh, more immortals on the way. Yeah, Trimaster definitely wants to get across the map as quickly as possible. The warp gets reinforced very quickly. In fact, uh, I think Sage actually now has enough to defend. Oh, definitely, especially we'll with see. those force fields. Possibly, actually, maybe no, not. Actually, he gets a couple. Of he gets oh, a couple the of zones caught. There's the photon overcharge. That's going to at least give him a couple more seconds to get more warp ins here. But Trimax is going to circle around and probably hit straight to the natural. 
Ah, uh, but there is yet another Immortal waiting for him. Oh, hopefully that Immortal does not get caught out of position. Oh, he stems in. He wants that Immortal. Where's the force fields? Are the force fields coming in? One more Marauder gets cleaned up here. The factory is starting to join the army. I'm not exactly sure why the factory is going to try and join the army, but the factory is going to join the army. One more force field does go down. A very delayed force field there. Force Sage is not going to catch that much. Does catch a medevac though. And that was an important medevac, one of the ones with a little more energy. Trimaster is taking some good trades here. Sage still has no real tech to back up his army. Just basic gateway units, no upgrades, no charge, no blink. So as Trimaster scales his army, as the medevac count and marine count increase, Sage, I think, might struggle to deal with this Tyrant Force. I'm going to stop going to the upgrades tab. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, you shouldn't go there. <laughs> I, I saw roaches. I don't... <laughs> but, uh... Sage, though, is, is still sitting... Yeah, I mean, he needs those upgrades, and he's starting to get the Double Forge. And, but he could really start getting a really great hold of this game if he does get all those upgrades up. Oh, very delayed force fields yet again. And Trimaster taking such great control of this map. He is. His army builds up. I, I feel he's, he's hitting a point where if he wanted to pull SCVs, he could probably barrel through Sage's army as it doesn't really have any area effect way to kill those SCVs effectively. There's not much energy on that Mothership Core, only a single photon overcharge. But, oh, oh he's going to load up three Medivacs. Right next to the Observer, though. Oh, yeah, the this Observer is, sees this. This is one of the only ways Trimaster can actually uh, lose the incoming battles if he separates his forces too much. But I think he, he's getting to unload the Stalkers who weren't camping the edge. These oh, Stalkers are all going to go down. What a Doom Drop this is. Going to be able to clean up all of these Stalkers. Where's the Mothership Core? That's the important part here if there's going to be a Photon Overcharge, and the rest of the forces are trying to get over here, but they're very, very slow here. No blink on these Stalkers, and these Marauders, Marines, and Medivacs are positioning so perfectly to section off this army in very, very small chunks and pieces. And the Zealots are getting cleaned up before they, uh, the rest of the army is even able to uh, come up. Very efficient trades there by Trimaster. Uh, he was trying to push on the third base as well, but a couple of Photon Cannons pushed his army back. But now he's going to come back, regroup, heal up his forces, meet up with some additional reinforcements. And if he keeps the pressure up, you know, these trades are all so massively cost efficient because Sage doesn't have uh, any form of area of effect damage to deal with this Terran army. And, uh, I mean, he's trying to get those upgrades. Oh, he was on move command there for a second, loses a few units. He's got to wait to get more energy on his medevacs so he doesn't fight with a, a, a damaged army. But the important part here is that that upgrade is just about to finish up. Wow, the factory has actually been rebuilt, and it looks like it's actually going to go down yet again. But the uh, the upgrades here for Sage are about to finish up here, whereas Trimaster is just barely starting. He's about a quarter of the way here of 1-1. One, one. And I just caught a whole bunch of Marauder shots in the ear. Those Marauder shots, they uh, concatenate very well de uh, in decibels. That's right, of course. Uh, the probe didn't really get to feel him very well. It went down extremely fast. And now Trimaster is still posturing around the middle with some units, but really there's a five medevac drop. It's probably going to hit the back of third, try to focus on the Nexus. That's the main threat for Sage. But Blink is, Blink is going up. Actually, medevacs, they're not going to go in the back. They're going to go straight on top of the photon cannons. Sage reacts beautifully, and his units, uh, this, this actually... Uh, Trimester is trying to fight with a portion of his army. And unfortunately, the other portion of his army is actually going to get sectioned off and completely cleaned up here. A lot of probes have been cleaned up, but it's... It's still, he did lose a lot of the army there. It's yeah. just the drop play. You just need to keep doing the drop play. Eventually, he'll start getting into a better position. And, or, uh, I mean, he, he's had about a... Uh, he's had almost a 10-minute window, or no, more like an 8-minute window, where if he just uh, attack moved... With, with, with the medevacs and the stim in a straight fight, he does have the better army. Uh, but, you know, he's still in a very good position. He, he's getting 1-1 upgrades. Uh, he's getting the 4th command center. He's getting the Ghost Academy as well. And now he's got double star ports. It, once Terran gets double star ports and the Ghost Academy, they can really produce whatever units they want to counter the Protoss air effect damage. And, you know, speaking of exactly what he's going to want to be countering, here's the Colossus tech with Thermal Lance on the way as well. Three, uh, plus three weapons is now getting started. And, uh, I'm sorry, plus two weapons is actually being started. So plus two, plus two is on the way here for Protoss. Charge is on the way as well. Um, and Templar Archives, you know, Sage trying to get into a really good composition against this Terran army. But I don't know if he's actually going to last that long because Trimaster is absolutely everywhere with his tech as well. And he's got the map control right now.
He does. Trimaster has the, the significantly superior army. Uh, he, he's got better tech unlocked, a little bit uh, worse upgrades, but going forward, you know, Sage isn't able to get that Psystorm ready in time. Trimaster may just run him over with, with a, a stronger composition. Here comes yet another Doom Drop, but the Observer once again spotted it, dropping as much as he can. One of the Metavax goes down before everything is evacuated. But there's just so much Marine Marauder oh, out he can here, get the and it forges. looks like he's going to take out the Nexus. He's going to get the Forges but the before forges. the upgrades finish. That would be a, a game over move. No, it, it, no. he doesn't want to risk running that far up. It would be a, a, a definitely a risky move. He does grab one of the Colossus, though, and he grabs the Nexus, so that's going to take out a lot of the gas mining here for Sage. So that's well, at least a very large victory here. Did take uh, He did lose a lot of forces. Uh, definitely uh, traded a little bit, not so favorably as far as units, but taking out that base was extremely important. He got rid of a lot of the stalkers as well. And, and going forward, I mean, uh, his economy is so much better than the Sages. He's got plenty of Vikings to deal with, with the Colossi. In fact, oh, his army may get stuck here though. Remember, Sage has Blink. And as long as he doesn't get Blink under, Blinked under, whatever the past tense of Blink is, it looks like actually, oh, he is... He's between a rock and a hard he place right lucky. now. Those Actually, he's above can't a rock, blink but down onto that beach. This is this is difficult. This is very difficult. Oh, not so much anymore. As now the huge force of Sage is moving over to Trimaster's uh, base over here. The Trimaster has the high ground. I heard that before in a Star Wars movie. Uh, here, if you have the high ground, you shouldn't even try it. You That's shouldn't right. Even try it. Sage didn't try it. He was very smart. Backs away. Uh, but, with, I mean, the, the Vikings killed the Colossus. Of course, there was only one. It was, it was a fake Colossus designed to get Trimaster to make as many Vikings as possible. But he, there's still no area of effect. He, he's got only two Archons. Uh, and Trimaster has a significant bio army, and he's equalized the upgrades. This is a very scary point right now. This is where both of these armies are at the exact peak of How their that performance. that scan not see the Observer? Oh, it's just on, like, the perfect edge of that scan. Oh, yeah, look at that. Wow. His his observers this game have been oh, yeah. have been the reason why he's still alive. Um, one of them, he did see a whole bunch of drops, and that actually that drop did a lot of damage. He didn't really heed what the observer saw. You know, but the observers for the most part have been able to help him stop drops and really get a good positioning on the armies multiple times. I think I'm realizing what's going on. Trimaster keeps scanning and try to find out where the high templar are because he knows that he he can't lose. Uh, unless he runs into a whole lot of storms from this point. And, and that's why he's so hesitant in engaging. Because he, he keeps thinking there's hidden Templar hiding around the corners, and he doesn't want to get run into storm flanks. Um, but as it is, I think he's just starting oh, to come to the realization that there aren't any Templar. Here comes a huge flanking maneuver, Axlev. As here comes a whole bunch of EMPs, but the Zealots are coming around from the other side. The force fields have sectioned off the army, and it looks like actually... Trimaster is doing so much damage to this. The Colossus is now finally just about to go down. No, the Viking doing just barely too little damage to take out that Colossus. And Trimaster has to evacuate with those medevacs and actually taking a huge dip in his army. A great Zelt flank there. The Bile couldn't kite. Uh, Trimaster needed to evacuate there, but he didn't quite have enough medevacs to evacuate the whole force. So he had to wait until a lot of his units were killed before getting that evacuation. And before then, you know, you just want to try and take out as much of the army as possible. Here comes the huge aggression out here from Sage. Going to try and clean up this game. Trimaster with a small, meager little army. Is he going to be able to defend this? The third base is now completely under siege. One cancellation on one of those command centers and now lifting off the other one. All the SCVs are going to be completely slaughtered, eviscerated by these Colossus and Blink Stalkers. Oh, the They're going to get straight to the fourth. Yeah, I mean, th that planetary alone can't really defend on its own. Trimaster's army isn't close enough. Uh, and with losing his base, he's going to run out of economy. There goes that. Oh, and they, oh, all the SCVs walk right into a whole bunch of Archons, and now they're all dead. 46 to 47 in the workers' killed count, actually. Trimaster is working on three three deaths moments from completion. That's going to give him a little bit of an upgrade advantage, as Sage will only be at 3-2. Unfortunately, he's still down by over 60 food. Planter on the right side needs to get that up, but the Zealots are working on it. There's no way he can say that. He's got to lift it up. Uh, he does lift it up in the last second there. The Planetary Fortress tried to come in, but those Zealots just way too much damage here. There are 3-2 three, three upgra uh, upgrades. More and more High Temple are being morphed in here. More uh, Archons. 
Trimaster sure does have get... Cloak on the Ghost. That's his one way to get back in the game. If he can spot that Observer, it's right where all the Claws are. If he can take that out, the, the Cloak Ghost may be a way back in the game for him. So many Ghosts. That's what's really scary here. So many Ghosts. He has to watch out because, I mean, he's got so many Archons and Ghosts do bonus damage against those Zealots. As soon as all of that's chewed through and those Vikings take out those Colossus, I mean, there's not that much army left. Of course, I just described the entire army here for Sage, but... As soon as you kill all the as units... As soon as you kill all the units... Then there won't be any units left! <laughs> I think we need John Madden in here. He lives <laughs> in New York City, right? But uh, it's, it, it's, it's still a very scary moment. You can't get caught by all those EMPs. It's just it's way too much damage. Uh, Sage gonna pull his entire army to deal with one Marine. Yeah, that was a scary Marine, man. Who knows? It, it could have been Rambo. Just could have been Rambo. Yeah. Could have been Jim Rayner. Jim oh, Rayner has got a easy. heck of a Gauss rifle. Uh, that's yeah. I, I would I would send in. I would not even. You know what? I would wait for like uh, 400 food to take on Rayner. <laughs> well, Jim did pretty well in the brackets today, so I don't that's think true. we have to worry about him anymore. That is true. He's done. All right, so uh, Trimax is, has to defend his third base. He's going to try to use these concaves on top of these ramps. And, and if, you know, Sage tries to go through them, you know, with enough great EMP, sniping Observer, that's his way back in the game. But Sage now, of course, has Psy Storm available. So Trimaster has to worry about that Psy Storm. Can we get some Benny Hill music to this probe chase, these probes chasing that one Marine? They uh, chased them so far. They were already at yeah. the Zelnaga from the, from the 2 o'clock position here. Trimaster is micro-green that Marine with all of his heart. Saying you gotta get 10 probe kills. That's your job. He's just losing Marines all across. Yeah. I mean, if I was a Marine. You would not want to be in his army. In Trimaster's army, yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't be. Yeah. Right next to Drunken Boy, because Drunken Boy sends you off with like four of your friends against an entire Zerg swarm. <laughs> that's true. That's definitely something you gotta be careful of. Trimaster moving out to attack, and that's, that's a very bold move considering he's, he's down by supply and he needs those defensive concaves to, to win the battle. Now he's gonna back up. Sage. He's in a really good position here. Sage being smart, not going into that position. I mean, once you move down that ramp, you're going to be completely, completely covered in EMPs. Sage adding in photon cannons. That's going to be a huge help because if his observer gets sniped, he's going to need another form of detection to back up to uh, to keep track of all those ghosts. And you know what's really interesting right now is there's, you know, there's zero drop play. I know Trimaster is very far below in food, and he doesn't really have that many forces to dedicate to anything other than trying to not die to Sage, but I think what he really needs to do is just start doing a little bit more drop light. And as I say that, there is a dropship now heading over here to the 2 o'clock base position. Sage. Oh. Sage can't warp in units. He's maxed out. He's maxed out. That's Some, it. Sometimes uh, these drops may, may convince him to attack in a poor position. Of course, he's ahead by enough. He might be to still make it work. But he still has a pretty good bank here. Um, I mean, he can at least start pumping out a whole bunch of high tempo. And actually, you know, the more probes that... Uh, yeah, that die, he'll just replace it with units. Exactly. <laughs> Don't kill the probes, Trimaster. Go straight for the Nexus. And then it's your opponent trap. can't warp in units. Oh, that medevac's going to be fed, fed back in, in just... Yeah, there it goes. And there goes the medevac. And now the Nexus is actually under siege as well. Oh, Trimaster's moving out with his main army. Oh, look at this, such a huge spread of forces here. So oh, many don't, don't go EMP. to the trimester, stay back. So many much. EMPs. Oh, but all the Vikings are grouping up here. The blink forward from the Stalkers. So many EMPs going down. But is it enough to actually weaken Sage's army to the point that he feels comfortable? He's got to be so careful about those High Templar. A couple storms going down on those Ghosts. Ghosts actually have a pretty good amount of health. Oh, the Ghosts are cornered, but they use Coke. There's no Observer. And Sage has to back up yet again. Oh, so there is an Observer, good. actually. Fighting range. So many Vikings are out here as well. Um, I feel like as soon as these Colossus go down, I think he might even try and bait those Colossus to get killed, and then he could just instantly resupply in something that Vikings don't kill. So here comes another huge engagement. There's so many MPs going down here, and it's actually going to completely destroy all of the shields here for Sage. Oh, Sage's Lord, army is so hurt, but Templar are getting some great storms off on those Vikings. The Vikings' are, account is absolutely diminished. But there's still enough to take out that one last Colossus. Is Sage going to be able to win here? He is GG thrown out by Trimaster 2-0 for Sage. Sage showing some great PVT there. Uh, really uh, utilizing the storms in the last battle very well. Always had Templar spread out, so even when the EPs went down, more backup Templar were, were coming into the front. Also those cannons there forming up, uh, you know, providing detection for those cloak goats. Very instrumental in late game.
I mean, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to have, you know, not worry about having so many observers there. The, the cannons were, were pretty smart. I mean, it gives him a nice little position to pivot around and gives him detection of those ghosts, and that forces the ghosts far back so that he can back up here, get into a better position, and then re-engage like, time and time again. And uh, that, was, that, was, that was pretty instrumental in the end of that game. Definitely well played by Sage here. He's going to advance into losers round four, where if he wins that round, he will qualify for the Challenger League. Of course, Trimaster, a great run on his part, but he's going to be eliminated. We'll hopefully see him again next season. All right, guys, we're going to run to a quick commercial break before we get to our second series. Stay tuned. I'm Sham2. With me is Axlav. We'll be right back.